It don't matter what come, I win. It don't matter how many times it come, I win. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, don't know what's, I, don't, I don't know what the bout is today. But you know what I feel like? It's too much power in the room. It's too much power in the room. Some power, some too, too much power. Some powerful people don't walk in the room. Let me let me get out there. I, that thing and got me mad, got me feeling good right now. I say it's the glory be to God. Okay, let me let me let it go. Now nah, let me let it go. Let me let, let me let it go. Cause I'm finna, I'm finna, I'm, I'm, I feel good, boy. I feel the power of God in here. All right, all right, man of God, come on, come on, come on, come on, hallelujah. Something happening in here right now. Glory be to God. All right, this, this man of God is so anointed. So if you don't have his book, get that book. Support his ministry. We do a podcast every week in the booth with Canton Jones and Messenger. So we... His, his rap name is Messenger. His government name is Kaiser Edmund Jr. The third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, but we always call him, uh, well, we don't call you Messenger. We call you Kaiser on the show. But y'all give it up for this, for this anointed man of God um, as he bring the word this morning. Amen. Y'all give it up for him. God's people, give God some praise in here. Amen. Amen. Y'all could, wait a minute. Y'all can do better than that. Y'all gave the coming to America clap for sex or chocolate. I don't know what that was. I ain't say give it up for sex or chocolate. I said give it up for the most high God, the most awesome, amazing God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank God for my brother and sister, Canton and Ramona. Amen. And for them being faithful to free life and, and building this, this ministry, this church. It is not easy to pastor. It is a strain. It's a strain on, on, on everything. It can be a strain on your pockets. It can be a strain on your family, on your household. But they keep their hands on the plow no matter what. Amen. And I thank God for them. So give them a, a, a round of applause and a good God bless you. Amen. Yeah, my, my my brother's supposed to be resting. He's doing too much right now. He's singing and, and doing everything. I, he told me he, he's supposed to be resting. I was like, okay, you, you're not resting right now. But uh, thank God. Uh, uh, just a few quick things. Uh, this Wednesday night, uh, we are doing the leadership meeting for all the volunteers and all the leaders uh, that have signed up for volunteer and leadership uh, here at Free Life. Meet here this Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. with just one hour. We'll be done by 8.30. Uh, so make sure everybody uh, be here on time at 7.30 uh, so we can go ahead and get everybody installed in their uh, places uh, for this uh, ministry. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, led to just get a lot of the work off of Canton and Ramona. They do a lot uh, in pastoring, it's like they do everything. They pastor, they sing, they raise the offering, they lead the worship. They're like, okay, let y'all doing a lot. Let it, there's plenty of uh, uh, availability and and uh, of people uh, in this in this uh, ministry uh, that can take the load off of you. Uh, so that's what we're doing. Uh, and and free life is growing. Free life is expanding. Uh, amen. And as he said, we have a podcast uh, five days a week. Uh, you can tune into uh, it's called In the Booth uh, podcast with Canton Jones and Messenger. Uh, it, it, you, you can get the funny, the jokes. You can get a word. If y'all need Bible study, just listen to the podcast because they're going to break out in, the, in them jokes uh, some kind of way. Uh, we'll speak a word. We'll preach. Then we'll bring up the, uh, the, the you know, uh, different topics. We play games, but it's, a, it's just a, a good way to give you a little nugget of something uh, throughout the week. So make sure you uh, go to your podcast platforms. You can watch us live on Facebook. You can watch us on YouTube. Uh, amen. Uh, also, I am a uh, the founder and the president of what's called Kingdom Impact University. Uh, amen. 
Uh, I, God, let me tell you how the kingdom works. Uh, the kingdom is like a mustard seed. All right. Uh, what a mustard seed is, it starts out very small, but it becomes the most dominant tree in the garden. Uh, I, I, Kingdom Impact University uh, started like this. Canton called me on the phone uh, when Free Life just started at the old warehouse. Y'all, how many people remember the first warehouse? Yeah, like six, seven years ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the whole warehouse. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but he called me. He said, man, we need something like a Bible study or, you know, something. All we were doing was Thursday night, Thursday nights at Free Life. Had no Sunday morning worship. We were just starting. Uh, didn't have any Bible studies. Just Thursday night worship uh, at Free Life. Uh, and he said, he called me. He said, man, we need like a Bible study or something. And, and, and uh, I said, man, I just started uh, building a kingdom curriculum. I don't know why. He was like, oh, man, can you teach that? I was like, yeah, I could teach that. Okay, when can you start? Uh, we can start in January. It was like November. We can start in January. I right, bet, bet, boom. Hey, hold up. I don't know why God told me to start writing a kingdom curriculum. I just started writing a kingdom curriculum out of nowhere. This is why you despise not small beginnings. God don't tell you to start the university. He tell you to start writing curriculum. And so I started writing curriculum. And then right when I finished the first semester of classes, he gave me a call. Start teaching the curriculum. And now we've got kingdom classes at Free Life for five years, six years. Then God said, okay, now I want you to start a university. I said, start a university? How? There ain't no... (laughs) I ain't even no teacher. What are you like? Uh, like start start a university. How I'm gonna start a university? I ain't got no building. I ain't got no facility. I ain't got no. How I'm gonna get accredited? This, that, and the third. God said, just start the university. So it started as a conference called Kingdom Generation Conference. I started a conference, and so out of all faith, just started a conference in the middle of a pandemic. Started a conference. I'm just going. I don't know how this gonna work out. I don't know what's gonna happen, and then. Uh, uh, people started responding. Everybody started getting excited. I said, oh, man, this thing is coming together. Then started the team started to come together. I got the, the, my, uh, my, my faculty. I got everybody together. And, and, and all of a sudden, I'm sitting there like, man, I got classes. I got all this. I need a spot. Then somebody come to me with a spot and say, man, you can do the, 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 the TV studio here and record the class here. Then I got a spot. I'm like, man, this thing has just come together. I ain't even hardly put a dime in this thing. And then I said, man, I can't even get this stuff accredited. Next thing I know, I get a call that say they want to honor you with a doctorate degree. So this time next week, I'll be Dr. Kaza Edmund. And now I can accredit the classes that God told me to start years ago. That's when God tell you to bring the purses and start small. God tell you to just do this, start small, just start moving. God tell you to start building the cars or whatever it is you're doing, just build the car. All right? Give the car. When God tell you to start, do, it starts off like a mustard seed. He don't give you the tree. That's why I say if you have a faith the size of a mustard seed, that's all you need to do to start. It says that's how the kingdom expands. That's how it expresses itself. That's how it manifests. So if God tell you to do something small, do it like you're already doing it big. Amen? Because that's where it's headed. Amen? Uh, thank God. So uh, Kingdom Impact University uh, is a kingdom learning uh uh, uh, it's not a uh, just a tuition-based, semester-based class or school. It is kingdom teaching that you're going to be able to get around the clock whenever you need it. It's on your schedule. It's on your budget. It's going to be basically God gave me a, 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 a way to do it that's uh, innovative. It's going to be like Netflix. It's just going to be classes, $9.99 a month. Classes, curriculum, uh, 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 worksheets, PowerPoints, everything will be there. Amen? On your budget, on your time. 
you can get kingdom curriculum like nowhere else on the planet. I've already researched. Nobody going to do it like this. Amen. They're going to have to change the way they do it. Amen. Because every Christian school I went to, every Bible school I looked at, every seminary, yeah, you got to break the bank to get in. Not kingdom impact university. Amen. It's going to be available uh, to anybody that wants to go further and go higher in kingdom education and kingdom understanding. Amen. Uh, so thank God for uh, that opportunity and, and just what God uh, has started. Amen. Uh, today I want to talk briefly. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and give you one of the classes. Amen. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, a course I have called Dominion. All right. And it is ironic that Dominion gave the two-minute nugget. Amen. So we already, <laughs> we are already in sync. Amen. Uh, but I want to talk about uh, Dominion, uh, this is the first class of a course that will be available at Kingdom Impact University uh, called Dominion 101. There'll be a Dominion 102, but this is uh, the foundation. Uh, so y'all get, get a class for free, amen. Give God a praise for that, amen. <laughs> yeah, uh, but make sure you, you, you do go to kingdomimpactuniversity.com. And go to uh, subscribe and put your email in so that you can get all the information when the classes start coming up. We have yet to start the class. Uh, the website is up, but the classes are not recorded yet. We're going to start recording the classes very soon. And so you'll be able to get uh, all the uh, classes and the information. That's kingdomimpactuniversity.com. Uh, Amen. All right. Uh, let's talk about dominion. And I I'm in agreement with uh, pastor, I believe, today. Uh, you are in the right place for a life-changing, mind-revolutionizing, transformation word uh, from God. Amen. Uh, God has had me here for the past few months, and it just it just keeps unlocking and keeps uh, uh, revealing itself uh, in a way that's just it, it changes my life every time God uh, reveals it. Um. But have your, uh, your, your, your Bibles handy or your Bible apps on your phones. Have them handy. If you've got a notepad uh, on your phone or if you write notes down, make sure you take notes. Uh, I'm a teacher. Praise God for these babies right here. They got the notepad out with the pen already. I don't know if they're drawing stuff or they, but I feel good. Yeah, there you go. All right, cool. Yeah, they already, they got notepads, pen in hand. Amen. But I feel good. They could be drawing SpongeBob. I don't care. I feel good. They 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 ready, amen. Uh, but uh, I just want to teach uh, this morning uh, for a second. Uh, let's see. What you get from the Bible is based upon your approach. Say it again. What you get from the Bible is based upon your approach. You figure, how can everybody read this one document and we end up with a thousand denominations, people going this way, people, you having Bible wars in the comment section on Facebook over the same topic, same scripture. They say something that they didn't took it out of context and you, they say you taking it out of context. Yeah, like It's the same, am I reading English? Are we reading the exact same scripture? How is it that you going that way and I'm going this way and then they going that way and it's this big argument about a passage? It is because what you get from the Bible is based upon your approach, okay? Uh, so what's revealed, watch this, what is revealed comes by what is salt. Let me say that again. What you get revealed comes by what you are seeking. Does that make sense? What is revealed comes by what you are seeking. If you are seeking how to get to heaven, it's going to run you right to Calvary. And it's just going to keep you there. If you want to know how to get to heaven, that's what you're seeking. It's going to run you to Calvary. All right? Uh, if you're looking for how to prosper, it's going to run you into a lot of prosperity scriptures. And then you'll have a prosperity gospel. Why? Because you're looking for how to prosper. Uh, uh, if you're looking for uh, uh, how to live right, you'll look for the holiness scriptures, and then you'll build a doctrine on holiness. 
Why? Because that's what you're seeking. All right? Uh, uh, the gay people, uh, uh, the gay community have gone to the Bible and went straight to Jonathan and David. And it said that they loved John, uh, David loved Jonathan and even kissed him. And they said, oh, look, there's homosexuality in the Bible. Why? What's revealed to them is what they was looking for. All right? What else? Uh, if you're looking for loopholes in the Bible, you'll find them. Because everything is not recorded there. So people actually go to the Bible just to look for loopholes so that they can destroy the argument. And then they find a loophole. Why? Whatever you're seeking, whatever you seek after, that's what's going to be revealed. Now watch this. If you do not seek first the kingdom, it will not be revealed to you. If you seek salvation, you'll find Calvary and you won't find the kingdom. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom because you can seek other things. He wanted the kingdom to be unlocked. He says the kingdom is like a treasure hid in the field when a man found it. He went and sold the land, uh, uh, sold everything he had and purchased the land that the kingdom was in. The question is, why did God hide it? He hid it so you can seek it. You ever played hide and go seek? Yeah. If you count the 20 and they ain't hiding, this ain't hide and go seek. This is tag. Right? Why is it hide and go seek? It's because now you have to turn around and you have to seek the hidden ones. So why did God hide the kingdom so that you could seek first the kingdom? And if you seek anything else, you're not going to run into it. Amen? So to receive the gospel of the kingdom, you actually have to seek the government of heaven. That is the only way. Uh, if you do not, these words in the Bible are going to land somewhere else. And you have all thousands of different kind of messages, a thousand different ways, and they're going to keep popping up. Every blue moon, somebody else is going to come up, and now you got the, the, this movement and that movement, and then, and then if you're mad at white people and you want them to be a slave, then you'll be a Hebrew Israelite, and then this, then this come up over here, and then you'll be the five percenters over here, and then you got all these different people reading the Bible, and they're all over the place. Why? Because you're not coming through the lens of a kingdom. Listen. Because this is going to change the way you read the Bible. A kingdom, everybody repeat after me, a kingdom wants to expand its territory, its influence, and its ideas. Say that again. Repeat after me. A kingdom wants to expand its territory, its influence, and its ideas. When you read the Bible that way, what didn't jump off the page, going to jump off the page, and you're going to see something you never saw before. Because now a kingdom is about to be revealed. Okay? Watch this. So, when heaven spoke from the beginning, when heaven spoke from the beginning, it was expanding its ideas. Say that again. When heaven spoke from the invisible realm, it was expanding its invisible idea into the visible. The Bible says God is light. Where is God? In the visible. So when he creates a visible realm, the first thing he says is what? Let there be light. Where does the idea of light come from? The invisible realm. See how this works? God is expanding his kingdom through his ideas. So the first thing he says, because he is light, is, okay, let there be light. That's kingdom expansion. This is not chaos. Okay? Then he starts with life. He starts giving life to plants, life to animals, life to man. Why does the idea of life touch the visible realm because John 1 and 4 says in him was life and the life was the light of men so God is light and inside of him is life so life is kingdom 
expansion from the invisible into the visible. Everybody with me? Is it making sense? Okay. Life, light, dimensions is expansion. Dimensions is expansion. The Bible says God made heavens, plural, and the earth. Heavens come in three dimensions. There are three heavens. There's a first heaven, a second heaven, and a third heaven. All right? Not on, now, if heaven comes in three dimensions, then the visible comes in three dimensions too, meaning there is length, sorry, length, width, and height. So invisible dimensions shows up with visible dimensions. So everything visible is now in three dimensions. Why? Because invisible is in three dimensions. Heaven is expanding its influence and its ideas. They're making sense. Now, heaven then says this word called dominion. Now, heaven only extends dominion in one place called man. God is an everlasting father with an everlasting dominion. He's an everlasting father with an everlasting dominion. What does that mean? Uh, he has rulership over all, and then he says, let's make something like us, and then he said, let them have dominion. So dominion did not just show up. Dominion already existed in the invisible and expanded to the visible. Does that make sense? Okay. So you're looking at a kingdom expanding its territory, its influence, and its ideas. Watch this. Genesis 1 and 11. If you got your apps, uh, you can go there. I'm going to just stay in Genesis 1. Now you, we, We're just going to scroll through uh, three scriptures. Genesis 1 and 11. Watch the pattern. Now, where does life come from, class? God. Why? Because life was in him. All right? Watch God expand life into the visible. Genesis 1:11. God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. Let the earth bring forth grass and the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its own kind. So what does that mean? This tree has life. What is it produ doing? Producing lemons. What does that mean? It will only produce lemons. This lemon tree will not produce a mango. The mango will not produce apple seeds. Life is going to produce through these plants like it's kind, meaning lemons. When you look at a lemon tree, you're not looking at a lemon tree. You're looking at a lemon forest. Why? Because there's seeds. And then you plant more lemon trees. And they have more uh, uh, lemons, and there'll be more seeds, and then boom. So it's producing from within itself like itself. Meaning the next lemon tree is inside the lemon. And the lemon is going to come out. Of a lemon seed uh, is going to come out of the lemon and produce another tree. So it's producing its own kind from within itself. Genesis 1:21, and God created the great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and after the wing and every winged fowl uh, after its kind. So now uh, the animals in the water that have life, produce their, themselves. From within themselves. The fowls of the air, the birds, they produce themselves from within themselves. Do y'all see this pattern? All right? Genesis 1 and 25, and God made the beast of the earth after his kind and the cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after its kind. That means a cockroach is not going to produce a spider. A cockroach can only produce a cockroach. What is it saying? A buffalo will only produce another buffalo. There is a pattern being created. 
because the life that's inside of God functions like this. And when he expanded it, he put it in the water, he put it in the land, then he put it on the land to walk the land, and then he put it in the air to fly. So all of creation that has life is the idea expressed and expanded from heaven's kingdom. Now watch this. Then God says, okay, it's our turn. Let us make man like us. 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 What does that mean? Ephesians says that he created us within himself before the foundations of the world. If we were created in him and he pulled us out of him, what are we? God's. Say it again. If he created us in him and pulled us out of him, what can come from a buffalo? A buffalo. Let me get that picture. What can come from a dolphin? I'm going to show you how this works. I'm going to show you a consistent idea of expansion. Look at this. Uh, that son of that elephant is what? An elephant. The son of that dolphin is what? A dolphin. The son of that deer is what? A deer. The son of this bird is what? A bird. It's in its likeness. So when something comes from inside of the thing, it is the thing. So if God pulled you outside from within himself, he's saying you are a God. This is why Psalms 82 and 6, which you never hear in the church. We have all our memory verses. Our God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. Uh, 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 no weapon formed against me shall prosper. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. You never hear this one. This should be our memory verse. Psalms 82 and 6 says, I have said ye are gods and all of you are the children of the most high. This is Psalms 82 and 6. Jesus comes and reiterates it when he shows up and looks at the religious folk and say, isn't it written in your law that ye are gods? So the law says, says it, and then Jesus comes and confirms it. He says, you are gods. Why? Because you came out of him. Anything that has life has to come out of something in its likeness. That is the pattern that was established. Why? Because heaven was establishing its ideas and its influence and expanding its territory. Now, the question is, why would you make something in your likeness? So that it would do what we do. So that it would have dominion just like us. Because if we are God and we have dominion and we want something to have dominion, then we got to make another God. So God expands his territory to earth. He establishes it himself, his representative through man. So now man is walking the earth as a God. Not only that, but with a mantle of dominion. Everybody say dominion. dominion. Why were you created? To have dominion. That's what he said. He didn't create you to do anything else but have dominion. That's why he created us. To have dominion, okay? All right, so... To qualify, Paul says in Romans 8 14, they that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. To qualify to be a son of God, you first got to be a God. 
Does that make sense? To be a son of God, you got to be a God. To be a son of a buffalo, you got to be a buffalo first. You see how this works? To be a son of a blue jay, you got to be a blue jay. So if you're a son of a thing, it's the thing. So God expands his influence through man. That's why you're able to create and produce kids that are created in your likeness, in your image, and then they're called by your name. See how that works? Because the kingdom expands through man. The ideas are consistent. The ideas are established throughout all of creation. If Jesus is the last Adam, then he is what the first Adam was. Let me say that again. If Jesus is the last Adam, then he is what the first Adam was. Meaning if Jesus is the son of God, then that means Adam was a son of God. Make sense? I can prove it. The only two places where Satan ever is having a conversation in the earth is when the first son of God showed up and when the last son of God showed up. In the garden, Satan shows up. When Jesus' mantle falls, he comes out of the, 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 uh, the, the uh, he comes out of baptism and then he goes into the wilderness, and who shows up? Satan. Satan showed up when the mantle of the sons of God hit the earth, and he never shows up again. He only showed up when the sons of God mantle hit the earth, in the garden, and when Jesus comes back. You never see him talking in the earth, anywhere. Genesis to Revelation, he talks in the earth or is recorded speaking in the earth twice. And both of those times is when the mantle of the sons of God hit. Now, when Adam shows up, he shows up with the mantle of the sons of God, which is the mantle of dominion for the earth. And what happens when Adam fell is that the mantle of the sons of God shifted from Adam to Satan. So now Satan is walking the earth with the mantle of the sons of God. And now he has the rights. He has the authority. He has the power. He has the deeds. And he has the license for the sons of God. Meaning everything the sons of God were supposed to do, he can now do it. What were we supposed to be doing? Or what was Adam? He had Adam was seated with God in heavenly places. That's why he could hear God. That's why Jesus had to restore us to that seat. Why? Because if you search the Old Testament, you will not find sons of God with man. You will find sons of God with demons. Genesis chapter 6 says the sons of God slept with the daughters of men. What are the demons being called sons of God for? In the book of Job, uh, it says when the sons of God came before the Lord and Satan appears. What is Satan doing on the mountain of heaven before God having a discussion about Job and God asked him, have you tried my servant Job? What are you having this conversation? I thought you kicked Satan out of heaven. How does he have the legal right to ascend to the high place? How does he have the legal right? Because he has the mantle of the sons of God. That's when the sons of God came, he showed up and God could not legally kick him out. God had to sit there and have a conversation with somebody he already kicked out. And he could not kick him out. So Adam was seated in heavenly places hearing God until the mantle shifted to Satan. And now Adam can no longer ascend in the spirit. Now Satan can ascend. Therefore, Adam can no longer hear God. God had to come down. That's why after they fell, it says, then they heard the Lord in the garden. He never heard the Lord in the garden until he fell. He was no longer ascending. God had to descend. This is why Moses could not ascend. God had to have a Mount Sinai for him to descend. Why? Because you can't ascend. Why? You no longer have the mantle of dominion. The Levitical priests, they couldn't ascend. 
So they had to create a tabernacle for God to descend. Job, perfect man, my servant. Yeah, he perfect, but he can't ascend, so God shows up to him in the whirlwind. If you read the Old Testament, the demons are ascending, and man, God has to descend. That's why there's no Mount Sinai in the New Testament. When Jesus shows up, the Son of God shows up, and he casts out a demon, the religious folks said, you cast out demons by Be the Beelzebub, the prince of demons, meaning they had never seen man cast out or control a demon up to that point. That says a lot. Number one, you knew the demon name, meaning you have many encounters of the demon. You know what the demon name is. You know his position. This is a principality called Beelzebub. You've had enough encounters with this demon. You know his rank and you know his name. And you know you can't control him. And so when Jesus shows up, oh, oh, they say, okay, you're doing witchcraft. You, this is Satan. Uh, uh, you cast down demons by the name of Beelzebub. They never seen the mantle of dominion in the earth. So when Jesus comes, when, I'm sorry, when, when, when Adam fell, the mantle shifted to Satan, and then God makes a promise to the devil. He says, the seed of a woman, pay attention, this is real important. The seed of a woman shall crush your head, and your head will bruise his heel. The seed of a woman will crush your head. He's talking to the serpent. And that seed, will you will bruise his heel, meaning this is going to be violent. This is not going to be a handshake. This is not going to be a business deal. It's going to be violent. When the Redeemer comes, it is going to be violent. He's going to crush your head and your head, the crushing is going to be so bad till his heel is going to bruise. That is the promise. So Satan leaves the garden and begins to operate with dominion, with the mantle of the sons of God, until the Redeemer shows up to restore. And watch this. Seek and save that which was lost, not them. You got to read it the right way. Why do people say them? Because they ain't looking for that. It does not say them. He came to seek and save that which was lost. He came to get back and transfer that which was transferred. That's why Satan tempted him with it. He said, all this power and authority, I'll give it to you if you agree and worship me. For I got it, it was delivered unto me. How you get it? I got it from the first Adam. God sent Satan to the earth. He did not send him with a mantle of dominion. He did not send him with a mantle to possess people. He did not send them to the, with a mantle to put sickness on people. He got that mantle from Adam. So then Jesus, the son of God, then tells his disciples, watch this. He gave them power to call themselves, what? Sons of God. And immediately, there is no sons of God on any demon for the rest of the Bible. Every time you see sons of God, it is now with men. Why? Because he restores the mantle of dominion for us to do what we were born and created to do. Moses could not do what we can do. Abraham did not have available what we have that is available. David could not walk in what we walk in. Why? It was not available. It had to be redeemed and restored back to man. Now, watch this, and I'm almost done. Okay, I'm going to call y'all the baddest hairstylists in the land. So free life, y'all are one person, and y'all the baddest hairstylists in the land. Y'all are the 10-time reigning national hairstylist champion. Everybody comes to you for the, uh, the, 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 the extravaganzas, the red carpets, the proms, the balls, and, and everything. You, you, you're the highest paid. Ain't nobody better than you. 
Okay? So, you're the baddest hairstylist in the land. I am a hairstylist, but I'm retired, and I want to start a hairstylist academy. All right? And I have recruited 12 recruits. And I want to make them, I want to train them to do what it is I do. So I go get the master hairstylist. And I bring in the master hairstylist and send them to these 12 recruits and tell them, okay, disciple and train them to do what it is you do. So if free life, if I bring y'all to this hairstylist academy and y'all about to train these 12, you are not going to give them a spatula, a stethoscope, a hammer, and a drill. Why? Those are not the tools for hair. What does that mean? That means you got to give them every tool you have. You have to give them the curling iron. You have to give them the hot press. You have to give them the lotion, I'm sorry, the hair lotion, the conditioner, the shampoo, the, the hair dryer, the rollers. You have to give them every tool you have in your arsenal. So they can do what you do. If not, they're not going to be the hairstylist. So if God says, I want sons of God to manifest, who do you send? Who do you send to train sons of God? The son of God. And when you send him, he got to come with every tool you have in heaven. We can't do what heaven does without heaven's tools. We can't have dominion if you don't give us the tools for dominion. Therefore, whatever Jesus had available. Everything he had available has to be available to the sons of God. If not, they can't be sons of God. So you have to give them the ability to create their mouth. Why? Because you're expanding your idea. They are gods, but they lost their mantle. But now they're becoming the sons of God, and now they can operate in dominion again. So you have to give them a will. Why? Because you have a will. People say, well, why God put the tree in the garden? It wasn't about the tree. It was giving man a will to say yay or nay. If you don't give them a will, then we are not made in his likeness. You have to give him the tools for dominion. What else tool did you give us? The power of agreement. Moses didn't have power of agreement. Abraham, Jacob, Isaac, they did not have power of agreement. Why? They couldn't be the sons of God. Why? They ain't had a mantle. When gods agree, it become, that's it. So if any two Sons of God, agree as touching anything, it shall be done. That's why the fall happened through agreement. Eve ate and nothing happened. It wasn't till Adam ate, there was agreement, then there was a fall. So, if there's redemption, there has to be agreement. With the gods. There has to be agreement uh, with the gods if there is redemption. That's why we have to confess with our mouth and believe. What is, I'm in agreement. And because I'm in agreement, now I have redemption. So I have the power of agreement. What other tools can I have? God says, I'm going to give you everything I do. Matter of fact, when you do it, I'm going to do it with you. So whatever you buy, 
on earth. I'll bind it right along with you. Why? Because we're doing God stuff. Whatever you loose, I'll do it with you. Why? Because we're doing God stuff. Binding and loosing is a power and authority for the sons of God. That's, cause, that's why I wasn't available in the old covenant. The, the gospel is a gospel of dominion. That's what it is. It's a gospel of dominion. It's a gospel of dominion that started in the garden, stopped, and then got picked up when Jesus came. Why? Because in the beginning was the word. So God was giving the word in the beginning, then man failed, and then the word became flesh. What did he do? He just came and picked up the word that stopped back then. You can't give them the gospel of dominion when they don't have dominion no more. So God had to shut up. And start giving laws and, 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 and prophecies. He could not give them the gospel of the kingdom until the mantle was restored. So Jesus has to come and pick up the conversation that began in the garden. God was supposed to teach Adam about agreement. It's just he failed before he ever got to it. He was supposed to tell him, look, you can bind and loose. He just failed before he ever got to it. So he sent the second Adam to pick up the conversation so that the sons of God could manifest. The Bible says all creation is waiting on the sons of God to manifest. Why do the sons of God need to manifest? And I'm done. Why do the sons of God need to manifest? Why do the sons of God need to manifest? It's so that the promise to the serpent can be fulfilled. When man lost dominion, they lost the mantle. What was the promise? The promise was the seed of a woman shall come and crush your head and you, your head will bruise his heel. Now, watch this. Isaiah says, unto us a child is born, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. He shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, the peace of his government. There should be no end. He will perform it on the, upon the throne of David with justice and judgment. The zeal of the Lord will perform this. He says, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government, the kingdom, shall be, the word shall be is the word Hagar in Hebrew. It means be appointed. So the way it reads is unto us a child is born, a son is given, and the kingdom will be appointed upon his shoulders. Unto us a child is born. Mary gave birth to Jesus. She did not birth Christ. A child is born, a son is given. God gave his only begotten son. When did God give his son? Not in Bethlehem. God gave his son when he was baptized. His son came down upon the one in the water, and then when the son is coming down, you hear a voice say, this is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. He wasn't talking about the one in the water. He was talking about the one that was coming down. So Mary gave birth to him. God gives the son. And when the son come, he's going to appoint the kingdom upon his shoulders. He's going to appoint the kingdom upon his shoulders, which is why he says, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the son of man have no place to lay his head. If you're not looking for the kingdom, you're going to say Jesus was a poor man looking for a bed. He was not looking for a bed. He was looking for a place to lay his head. Where is your head on your body? It's laying on your shoulders. So the prophecy was that he would appoint his head upon shoulders. So when he says, I'm looking for a place to lay my head, he's not looking for a bed. He's looking for a body. Why does he need a body? Because the prophecy was not, you will bruise his head and his head will bruise your head. The prophecy was not, he will bruise your head and your head will bruise his head. That means he going to bruise you. It said that your foot, if we are the body, 
And Jesus is the head. And the promise is that the foot will crush your head and your head will bruise his heel. Jesus was not the one doing the crushing. The body is, so the sons are supposed to be crushing violently. That's why Jesus had to train sons of God. So that we, so that we could crush the head of the serpent, which is why Jesus says, I give you power to tread on serpents. What does that mean? That means you're seated above him. Jesus said, I put all things under my feet. That means everybody in my body is a enemy. Say it again. Everybody in my body is above the enemy because I put all things under my feet. Therefore, everybody in my body has authority, rights, deeds, licenses, and power over Satan now. And now I'm leaving them. I'm leaving an ecclesia not to do holy services on Sunday, but to be a dominion academy. The church is supposed to be a governing ruling body. It's supposed to be a dominion academy producing sons. But when you read it the wrong way, it lands you in a wrong spot. And then you preach and you do the wrong thing. You have to take it through the lens of the kingdom. We should be crushing the head of the serpent. Two weeks ago, I saw uh, Rihanna. I talked to her just over here before I came up. I saw Rihanna sitting right there. And we were up here doing the, the prayer, the altar prayer. And I said, bring the baby up here. God said there's an attack on that baby life. I saw a claw over Rihanna's head right there. And it wasn't Rihanna. The baby was on the floor. So God said, it's after the baby. I told Rihanna, bring the, this two weeks ago. I said, Rihanna, bring the baby up. I got to pray for, pray for the baby. I prayed for the baby, and I ended the, the prayer with, and there will be a good report attached. After service, she said, well, the first report was negative. Three minutes before I came up here, Rihanna said, we went back and there was a good report. That is crushing. That is crushing. That is crushing violently. I didn't make a deal with a demon. Crushed his head. Saw a claw clear as day in front of that, 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 that uh, camera right there. And it was clawing. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Crush his head. We dare. I'm going to dance on the devil's head. You're not crushing him. We got all kind of church stuff. That ain't crushing nothing. Turn around three times. Every time you turn around, you're going to be blessed. Jesus did not teach the sons of God to do that. We got all these doctrines that don't crush nothing. Why? Because we did not come in the right way. We came in looking for all kind of other stuff, and it landed us in other places. The only way this, this word lands accurately is if you go in accurately. If you don't go in through the lens of dominion, you're going to be off. You're going to miss everything that is there because the kingdom is like a treasure hid. The only way you're going to find it if you first seek the kingdom. You can't seek anything else. And the kingdom will reveal itself. And when it reveals itself and it empowers your life, 
you become the sons of God. Everybody stand to your feet. Father in heaven, I thank you. Father, I thank you for these souls that are in this room. Father, I thank you for that which you have made available. For that which you have made available through Christ. Father, I thank you that what we lost, you came to seek and save. Father, I thank you that what you came to restore has been redeemed. Father, I thank you that these gods in this building, I thank you that in the council of these gods, that a mantle is now touching them. And they are now becoming the sons of God. I decree an ensuing of a violent crushing against their house. Everything that has come against their house, I decree, in the name of Jesus, is crushed. So that they can have life and life more abundantly free from satanic oppression. Free from stress. Free from depression. Free from anxiety. Free, free from paranoia. Free from poverty. Free from confusion. Free from all of the works of Satan. The works of darkness, I decree, are now destroyed. I decree that these sons of God violently crush the head of the serpent. You have given them power to tread on the serpent. Not to dance with the serpent. Not to make a, a commitment to the serpent. Not to make a deal with the serpent. But to tread and crush the head of the serpent. I decree that they will walk in the power, authority, rights, licenses, and deeds of everything that is available to them. I decree that heaven is withholding no good thing. Father, remove confusion. Remove the web of confusion that they will see heaven's light. I decree that heaven's, the light of heaven will shine on them and through them and will touch everything connected to them. So that every engagement that they have with every other God is a favorable engagement. If they engage a police, it's going to be favorable. If they engage the bank, it's going to be favorable. If they engage any agents, it will be favorable. If they engage a council, it will be favorable. I decree they will have life more abundantly without satanic limit limitations, satanic restrictions. I decree everything Satan has established is now overthrown in the realm of the spirit. I decree the kingdom come violently. I decree the kingdom is established. And everywhere Satan has established is now dismantled in their life. They will be free. Free your people today. Free your people from ideas that heaven never breathed on. Whether that's business ideas, whether that's relationship ideas, everything they tried that heaven didn't breathe on that held them in captivity. You said you come to set the captives free. I decree every captive is now set free in this building. I decree every satanic imprisonment in their mind, including unforgiveness, is now removed. Father, be a light unto their feet and a lamp unto their path so that they can see what they could not see before. Sharpen their discernment that they may be ambassadors for Christ, that they may be agents of heaven in the earth so that they would do what heaven would do as if heaven is here doing it itself. We are created 
to bring heaven everywhere we go in the gates of hell cannot prevail where we show up I decree there's a violent crushing in the spirit I decree the gates of hell I, I decree the gates of hell will not even manifest where we are I decree we are healthy and wealthy in every area of life and that God is bringing you into your wealthy place every every counsel you got from the world financial counsel relationship counsel business counsel ideas you got from heaven just snared you and I decree you are free from it I decree in the spirit you are sinned to you are seated with Jesus in heavenly places so that you can hear the conversation Paul said our conversation is with heaven I decree you will hear heaven's conversation and that your inner dialogue is set to heaven's frequency in Jesus name you are now the sons of God you are more than a Christian you are more than a Hebrew Israelite you are more than a five percenter Muslim whatever you want to be down with you are more than that that's not what you were created to be you are created to have dominion that's what was lost that was what was restored Everything else we added. Father, have your way. Father, have your way. I decree these people are, will be a city set on a hill. They will be the head and not the tail. They will be above and not beneath. I decree where they were the borrower, they will be the lender. I decree where they were in lack, they will have abundance. I decree where they were confused, they will have clarity. I decree where they were ignorant, they will have wisdom. I decree in the, in the name of Jesus. I decree where they were bound, they will be set free. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Everybody lift your hand. Everybody lift your hand. And just bless God. And as you bless him, just receive everything that is available through this word, through this truth. Receive everything. Receive every idea. Meditate on this word right now. Meditate on it. Let heaven minister to you right now. Let heaven give you something that I did not say. Let heaven begin to minister to you right now. You are sons of God. You are ascending in the spirit, I decree, right now. And you are hearing what heaven has to say about your situation. Right now, you are getting a download about your business. Right now, you are getting a download about your relationship with somebody. Right now you are getting a download of what you need to do in your house. Right now you are getting a download of what you need to give up. Right now you are do getting a download of how to overcome your addiction. Right now heaven is speaking to you. Hear heaven. Hear heaven. Hear heaven. Oh my goodness. Heaven is in the room. Heaven, I, I feel chill bumps. Heaven is in the room. God, you said with two or three gods gather, you'll be in the midst. Heaven is in the room. Hallelujah. Heaven is in the room. Father, speak. Let them hear your voice. Give them instruction. Give them divine counsel. Give them direction. What you are hearing is not yourself. What you are hearing is heaven giving you direction and giving you counsel heaven is freeing you heaven is pushing you heaven is advancing its will right now receive it receive I ain't never I ain't no prophet you ain't got to be no prophet you a son you don't need no prophecy you a son listen listen hear he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit has to say God gave you an ear to hear heaven. Listen. Hear it. I know heaven is speaking because he's speaking to me right now.
Father, forgive us. Father, forgive us. Father, forgive us as we forgive. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. I give God a praise in this place. Well, y'all can do better than that. Give God a praise in this place. Amen. You may have your seats. Sons, you may have your seat. Amen. Did anybody get anything today? Anybody get anything today? Amen. Praise God. This word, meditate. This word, meditate. Get up, say I'm a God. Don't be afraid to say it. They, they, the church done taught you that, 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 that that's almost arrogant. No, it's not. That's what you are. You are a God. Carry yourselves accordingly. When you say, a, when, let me tell you something, just when you say you're a God, it automatically shifts your mind. And things you used to just take, you just start taking. Things that used to bother you don't even bother you no more. Like, wait a minute, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a God. Don't even bother me no more. So govern yourself as the sons of God. Amen. You got anything, Pastor? Amen. All right. Uh, you may stand. I believe we got food. Yeah, we got food over here. Uh, again. Oh, okay. Y'all give it up for Miss Love. Amen. Hey, everybody. Um, before you go to get your food, the Lord um, has blessed me to be a distributor. So there are shoes in the back um, for everybody that would like shoes. I'm giving them away. Um, also, I made shirts. I was going to sell them, but the Lord told me to give them away also. So those shirts are also free. So as you're eating and as you're conversing with everybody, go ahead and grab you something. Wasn't that a powerful word today? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. I feel taller. I don't know. Just knowing that I'm a God and I have that power to tread over serpents and scorpions, right? All right, so we're going to go. Um, I'm going to pray everybody out before we continue, and um, I'll just give you some more, just reiterate the uh, announcements. So let's pray right now. Lord, we thank you, Father, for this day. We thank you for this amazing Easter Sunday that you've given us. We thank you that the word that was spoken and has gone forth was sown into good ground to grow and harvest in our lives and our families' lives. We thank you for the food that was prepared for us today, and we just thank you for the fellowship uh, to get to know each other and to grow as a free life family. We love you, God. We praise you, God, and we honor, it, honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys can go ahead and eat. If you go to your left, we got some good food. It was smelling good. I ain't going to lie. My stomach was growling as the word was going forth. But yes, just to reiterate on this Wednesday, if you want to be a part of the leadership, um, we will. That is in person, right, Pastor Kaiser? Uh, the leadership on Wednesday, yes, at 730. 730. So I know that we normally do music at 730. We're going to uh, skip a week for that. We're still going to do the uh, drama at 630, 630, 730. But we're going to have a leadership uh, meeting right here in the building. Please be here. We, we would love for you guys to be involved. This Wednesday at 730, all right? And we won't keep you long at all. So if you want to be a part of the drama and you want to be a leader, you can do it all in one day, all right? Also, if you still want to be a part of music, still come. We'll be here. You, can, you guys can come and talk to us, and we can let you know what's happening with the music department. Uh, if Don't forget, before you leave, if you can go to the back table with Miss Ursula. Miss Ursula, if you can give me a wave. Yep, she's in her white and yellow and black today, holding it down. If you go to that table, just to let us know what your interest is as far as the small groups, we want to know um, where we'll be able to place you guys. And again, just thank you guys for coming and being a part of Free Life today. We love you guys.
Yeah. So full. <laughs> and what it feel like. Yeah. We're going from making to the nations with this one. Uh. My God is up north and ain't talking about New York. He sits on top of the world and the angels sing you are holy. For God to love the world, he gave his own lip. Begotten son and he is the truth. No phony, homie. Me no more, Mr. Lonely. Cause I belong to the rock. Not that you're on it. Uh, Satan, hating, roaming around daily. Like a roaring lion, first Peter 5, 8. And if you have ears, listen He trying to catch us flipping like a bad transmission You wanna leave us rubber bait, broke, blind, cripple He came to seek and destroy like missiles 